Hello everyone and welcome back to a new Salad CLI tutorial. Today we'll be linking Gminer to your Salad account balance so you can directly mine from the miner to your Salad account. This video will be split into two different parts. The first one will be setting up the miner itself with the main tutorial. And then in the second part we'll explore extra command line options you can use to customize your experience. The first step is just going to be installing Gminer. What I recommend you do is directly going on my website to the Gminer guide, then under Gminer, there should be a link directly to it. You can also directly search it on the internet. If you click it, it will usually bring you to the GitHub where you can directly download it. In my case, I already have it, so we'll just directly jump into the folder once extracted. Once extracted, you should directly come up to here. We have many files, but we actually don't need all of them. What I suggest you do is delete all of the ones all the way up to E, delete Cortex, BitTube, AION, and Eternity. You can also just directly create a new one and then rename it to Kaopao. Okay. Second file, the second thing we're gonna need to do is getting our wallet and our rig. There are two methods to doing this. The first one is going in the app, under the Earn tab, Minor Details, scrolling down to the Show folder. It should directly bring you into the logs. If this button isn't here, or you just can't click it, you can also type search for percent app data percent, opening that, scrolling all the way down to Salad, then under Logs, and you're exactly in the same area again. Once you're here, just open the logs, and you'll have to search for specific things. One of the easiest methods, instead of scrolling randomly, is searching for things. Press Ctrl F and start searching. There are some keywords you want to get at. First one is dash U. In our case, we just found it here. But I also want to explore dash while, as well as dash E while. These are usually commands that are used oftenly by the miner in order to start mining. If those don't work, you can also search for nice hash, like exactly like this, as well as ethermine. Usually, you'll pop up with something like this, and this is exactly what we're looking for. Once you have this, just keep them in mind and keep the log open so you can always come back to it when we'll need it later on. That's the end of finding the wallet plus rig. Now we'll directly switch to the bat. Go into G minor, and we'll start editing each of these. I'll start with ETH because that's usually the one people go for. I'll be covering the other ones in a more, in a less detailed version, just skimming through and explaining big differences. Okay, once you're in the file, what you can directly do is actually delete everything all the way up to algo. Here, We'll actually start inputting our own values. The first one is going to be dash s, the code info server or the pool. In our case, we want to go on ethermine, so we'll type eu1.ethermine.org. Note that I use eu, but if you're closer to us, you can also just type in us. And if you're closer to Asia, you can also just type in Asia. In my case, I am closer to eu, so I'll just stick with eu for now. Then, at the end of this string, what you can directly do is input the port. Gminer uses the dash n tag in order to create a port. For ethermine, this port is 5555. And you'll just want to keep it at that. Next up, we'll be actually putting your user, so the miner knows how to identificate you on the network. You just want to type dash u, and then we'll go fetch the values in the logs. Since we're using an ethermine pool, we're going to use the ethermine wallet and rig ID. First up, get the wallet address, copy that and paste it. Add a dot at the end, and take the worker ID, and paste it as well. And that's all of it for the rig and wallet. And then because we're on an SSL pool, you just want to do dash dash SSL. And that, believe it or not, is the end of the ETH file. 
I'll be rapidly showing all of the extra files for the other coins you can use, but I won't be going into extra detail for them. I'll just for all of the other files that have already been completely filled out for me, so now we can just directly go in and I'll show you the differences. First up, Beam. Beam, as you can see, all that changes the algo to beamhash3, and the server is now using a nice hash wallet. As you can see, the pool, the port also hasn't been changed, and this is normal. In terms of user, as you can see, we are now using the nice hash wallet and rig. This is important because we are now in a nice hash pool. Whenever you're mining on nice hash, you want to use the nice hash pool values. That's it for Beam. Let's move on to the next one, also known as BTG or Bitcoin Gold. If you want to open it up, you'll see that once again we are in a nice hash pool, and the algo has been changed to 144 underscore 5. This is the code name for the algorithm Zash. Once again, the port number is changed and is here. And you can see that we use the wallet for nice hash. As you can see, there's an extra command called dash dash purse auto. And this is a personalization string that will be applied. It is required for reset hash pools. So you just want to add it if you want to mine BTG. Next up, we'll be looking at ETC. For ETC, we are back on the Ethermine pool. If you check it though, you'll see that there are key differences, such as the algorithm that changed to ETC, and the pool that changed from EU1 only to EU1-ETC. As you can see, the pool, the wallet and rig ID are also different. They are back to the Ethermine values. And once again, don't forget to add dash dash SSL. And that's it for ETC. And last but not least, we are going to check out Kaopao. Once again, Kaopao, we use the algo Kaopao. This is a nice hash pool. We want to use the nice hash wallet and rig. And that's it. Okay, with all of that done, I just want to show you an example of what it is to run on Ethereum. Just take your file and double click it. I'll just full screen it so you can check exactly and I'll explain a bit how the command line works. So first up you have this main thing here. Now as you can see the algorithm is nicely put as ethash and this is good. We are mining with ethash. The dev fee for ethash is 0 0.65. Values of it will change depending on the algorithm you're using. For example, Beam has a 2% dev fee. Next up, we can check that the pool is the right one. We are in the SSL pool for Ethermine, which is exactly what we chose. The user is the correct one. And as you can see, intensity is at 100%, which is perfect. I'll just skip all of these and go up here. Over here, you will see that ID is zero. And that's because our GPU is GPU zero. I'm on a tech 60 and my temperature is 76 degrees. Fan is 0%, but that's because I don't have any fan settings. And this is my hash rate. Next up are the shares. 0 for accepted, 0 for rejected, and 0 for stale. I want to have as many uh, accepted shares as possible. If you actually took look just below, you'll see that we actually got an accepted share right here. And this is actually reflected right here with 1, 0, 0. What you want to do is actually get as many accepted shares as possible because these are the ones that give balance. If you continue to the right of the shares, you'll see that we have the core and mem. These are just the uh, values for the core and memory clocks. To the right of that, we have the power usage in watts, and then efficiency, which calculates, which calculates the kilo hash per watt. Just under that, it'll tell you again what is the pool you're mining to, and then the shares per minute, in my case 1.0 because it only had been one minute at this point in time, as you can see right here. If you look just below though, you can see that it's been 1 minute and 30, so the share per minute has been changed to 0 0.67. And then right next to that we have the electricity, 0 0.01. Now if you scroll just right back up to the share, this is exactly what you want to get. 
You want to get as many shares accepted as possible because they're the one that give value. So if you see one of these, it's a good sign. This pretty much concludes all of the G minor mining. You can just leave it like that and you'll progressively get some balance now. I hope this was useful. And now this is the end of the main tutorial. We'll be moving on swiftly to the extra command line options you can add to customize your experience. I'll be closing this file for now, just to be working in better conditions. I won't be showing them for everything since they're, they're exactly the same no matter which coin you're mining. I'll just be changing the. Once again, we can just open it and I'll be adding some specific things. The first one is dash dash intensity. Also, you can just type in dash i and then a value ranging from 1 to 100. This is the percentage of usage you want your GPU to be running at. For example, if I only want my GPU running at 50% usage, I'll just type in dash i 50. If you want it at 30%, 30. If you want it at 80%, 80. And so on. I'll just leave it at 50 for now. Next up, Gminer offers the possibility to overclock on the go. There are two commands for this, one for the memory clock and one for the core clock. They work in the same way. Dash dash m clock for the memory clock and then a value. There is one key difference though between NVIDIA and AMD cards. For NVIDIA, we'll, we'll want to use what is called a relative value. For example, plus 300. This will just change in an additional 300 megahertz. Although, if you want to make it go down, you can just do minus 200. For AMD cards though, you want to use absolute values. This means that you no longer want a plus, but you want to say directly the answer. For this, you want to know your, your normal um, memory clock. For example, I know mine is in the about 3500 region. So say I, over, I want to overclock by 200 more, I'll just set it to 3700. In my case though, I am on an NVIDIA GPU, so I'll just stay with plus 300. For the core clock, it's going to be the exact same thing. Just press C clock, and then you want to do the same thing. Plus 300, the case of an, of an NVIDIA GPU, and then an exact value, in the case of uh, an AMD GPU. The next command you want to try and maybe look out for is temp limit. This is going to, to limit your GPU usage just so it meets a certain temperature. For example, if you don't want a GPU to go above 80 degrees, just type in temp limit 80. Once it reaches 80 degrees, it will stop mining for a while just for the time to cool off. I don't use it often because my laptop often goes very high in temperature very fast. So my my computer wouldn't mind much at all if this if this command was activated. However, I do recommend it in your system, as it can usually prevent it from going above a certain limit if you're not watching constantly. And lastly, the command dash dash electricity cost. Now this one is pretty long, but it's very interesting. Just add in USD your price per kilowatt per hour. For example, let's say I pay 0 0.2 USD per kilowatt hour. We'll see exactly what it means in a few seconds, but in case, just so I can show you better, we'll say that I pay 100 USD per kilowatt hour. You know what? Let's say 1000, just so we actually clearly see how it happens. What this will do is calculate the electricity cost that you pay as you're mining. We can see this in effect by just launching. As you can see, dash I50 is here and it is represented in here. I intensity is only 50%. So we only be mining at 50% intensity. Everything else is correct as usual. We're on ETH and the dev fee is of 0.65. The pool is still the right one and our user is good. Temperature limit of 90, we have added it. 
if you actually change it, you should see a change here as well. As you can see, everything looks pretty normal. I'll just wait a bit until we get more info. And we actually just got it. As you can see right here, this is the price I just paid for starting to mine. Bear in mind that in my case, it says $0.38 because I have such a high amount of price per kilowatt hour. In, mo in most cases though, I can assure you that you are not paying $1,000 per kilowatt hour so this electricity cost will not be as high as mine is right now. In any case, you can see that the hash rate has also dropped to about half, but that my temperature is staying pretty stable even though I'm mining, and this is the real advantage of intensity use. And that's pretty much it for extra command line options. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and I hope to find you again in, an in another CLI tutorial. As always, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.